we classify feet into three arch types, either a flat foot, a normal arch and a high foot. One of the easiest ways to do a bit of self-diagnosis is if you step into something wet and then walk across some concrete. And what you're looking for is there an arch in your footprint. So if you look at somebody who has a normal arch in stance, you can often see the arch is there when they're standing up. And so this part of the foot, the inside or the soft skin of their foot is not touching the earth. The reason that we tend to have an arch is to do with the way that we walk. So when we walk on our feet, most people don't realise, but we land on the outside of our heel. And the reason we do that is because higher up the body at our hips level, we are swinging them slightly so that we can move forward. And part of the reason we want to see an arch when we are standing is because what it means is that that part of the body is recovering from that flattening that happens as we land. Flat feet, of course, historically have been considered quite the problem, to the point where during World War I and World War II, they were actively discouraging people from enrolling into their services if they had flat feet. The majority of people will do quite okay with flat feet, but a small percentage will end up with some more foot pain, certainly more knee pain and lower back pain and hip pain if they are walking to the point with severe flat feet that they're not functioning as they should. So we always say to people, if you're concerned about the flatness of your feet, have somebody look at them that knows what they're doing and they can see if there's any functional concerns that may need some attention. Now, kids with flat feet are a very different story. When we're born, we have a very immature little foot and because of the way that we're packed in the uterus, our feet are turned in, they're facing each other and they take a little while to unroll. What we find though is as children start to walk, they will start with very much what we call a flat foot fall. So their whole foot comes in contact with the earth. But as time goes on and their muscle, bone and nerves all mature, you'll find they'll start to develop that arch and they'll start to develop the gait that is common to adults. So if we have children that are flat footed, it's a perfectly normal finding all the way up until when they're about 10 years of age. We expect there to be some form of flatness. A high arch foot is actually one that I worry about more than a flat foot. This isn't quite a representation of a high arch foot per se, but it is one of our skeletons that just shows you all of the muscle and ligament activity that goes on on the arch side of the foot in an attempt to hold it up. Now with high arch people, unfortunately, this is all doing its job way too well. So people will land on their heel, not have that natural rolling in motion. And unfortunately, that means that the shock is then carried up the leg and felt in both the, you know, the ankle, the knee and the hip. Now interestingly with the wet test that we were discussing before, you'll find a true high arched person, when they wet the sole of their foot and then step on concrete, you'll notice the arch is missing completely in most of them. If there's absolutely no arch visible on a wet test type, please do see somebody because we do know that all that shock can eventuate in arthritis, but it can be helped if we put some cushioning under the shoe to give you some shock absorption while you're walking. Yeah.